So till now we have dealt largely with a quantity called VRMS, but then we really wish to go beyond this and get a sense of what fraction of molecules have speeds greater than the RMS speed or what fraction of them have speeds say more than thrice the RMS speed and so on and so forth. So to establish this, we need to know how velocities are distributed amongst molecules. So consider this equation that connects a quantity called PV and the velocity of a molecule V and uh, M here is the molar mass of the gas, R is the gas constant and T is the temperature of the gas. And this relationship was given by the famous Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell in 1852 and his result is known as Maxwell's speed distribution law. So this here is a plot of this equation with PV on the y-axis and V on the x-axis. Now it is very important to understand how we read and interpret this graph. So let us see what really is this quantity PV. Well PV is called the probability distribution function and to understand this let us assume that we have n number of molecules in a sample and of these n molecules we say a very small number of molecules say dn have velocities in the range v and v plus dv. Now the question is that can we find a function pv such that dn is equal to n multiplied by pv that is a function into dv and if we can then maybe rearrange this equation as dn upon n is equal to pv into dv and let's call this equation 1 then dn upon n is nothing but the fraction of molecules that will have speeds in the interval v to v plus dv and will be equal to pv into dv. So we can see that fraction of such molecules that is molecules in the speed interval v and v plus dv is equal to the area of the strip that is height pv into the width dv. So using this logic the area under the curve should be the fraction of molecules whose molecules have velocity ranging between 0 and infinity and since 0 to infinity covers all molecules this fraction therefore should be 1 or the integral of PV dV from 0 to infinity should equal 1. And again using the same logic the fraction of molecules which have speeds between let's say V1 and V2 should equal to integral of PV dV integrated from V1 to V2. Now you must note that PV has units of probability per unit speed interval and since probability is a pure number PV should have units of reciprocal of velocity or seconds per meter and very often students think PV is the probability that a molecule has speed equal to V but that is not the way PV should be interpreted. So if you see this figure it shows the height of the curve for any value of V is proportional to the number of molecules with speed near V meters per second. So more the height of the curve means more the number of molecules at that speed. Therefore the peak of the curve shows most probable speed and we call it VMP which means you have most number of molecules in the box moving around at that speed at a given temperature for which the curve has been made. Now if we know PV which we do, we can calculate the most probable speed VMP by finding dP upon dV when it is 0. So if we take the differential of PV and then equate it to 0, what we get is VMP is equal to root of 2RT upon M and this is called the most probable speed. So again a molecule is more likely to have speed VMP than any other speed but some molecules will have speeds that are much more than VP and you can see that these molecules are in the tail end of the distribution curve where the velocities are very high. Well we can also find the average speed V average of the molecules in the gas all we need to do is take a weighed average of all velocities in the distribution. This means that we multiply V with the fraction of molecules that have velocity V and we have just established that this fraction would be PV into dV 
and then we add up all such fractions and this can be done by integrating PV dV multiplied by V from 0 to infinity to cover all velocities and what you get is V average is equal to integral of 0 to infinity V PV into dV. So if we use this formula for PV in this equation, what we find is V average equals root of 8 RT upon pi M and this is called the average speed. Now we can also find the V square average the same way but the integration would be for V square PV into dV. So V square average equals 0 to infinity V square PV dV and when you calculate this what you get is V square average is equal to 3 RT upon M and therefore the square root of V square average or the RMS velocity is equal to root of 3 RT upon M. Well, if we can get our attention back to the most probable velocity or VMP, we find that this velocity has a big role to play in how the nature behaves. So the speed distribution of water molecules in say a pond at summertime temperatures would look quite like this curve. Well, with a distribution curve like this, most molecules lack the energy to escape from the surface. However, a few molecules in the high speed tail end of the curve can have enough speed to leave the pond. So these are the water molecules that evaporate and end up making clouds and therefore rain possible. As the fast water molecules spring off the surface of the water carrying energy with them, the temperature of the remaining water is maintained by heat transfer from the surroundings and well other molecules gain high velocity when the collisions happen and end up taking the place of those that have left and the speed distribution of the curve is therefore maintained. Well another interesting phenomena that can be explained while studying velocity of gases is why is there so little hydrogen in our atmosphere and the reason for it is that while nitrogen and oxygen molecules are on an average moving slowly enough to stay in the atmosphere, the hydrogen molecules are moving very fast. In fact, a number of hydrogen molecules have velocities that are well above the escape velocity on Earth at 1.12 into 10 to the power 4 meters per second and therefore escape into the space and very few hydrogen molecules at lower speeds tend to stay in Earth's atmosphere along with the slow moving oxygen and nitrogen molecules. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.